Good morning, Year 12. This is my first experience of doing something like this, and we'll see how it goes. I just want to spend today just going over some of the work that I've got you at the end of last term. So if you remember, the work I've got you was the physical influences of the urban area. So this is the PowerPoint I put through on showing my homework. The easiest way of understanding urban heat islands in my case climate is just remembering two key principles. And those two key principles are it's warm air rises. It is light, which means that at the surface of the earth you then get low pressure. Cold air sinks because it is heavy, it is denser, which means that on the Earth's surface, you then get high pressure. So once you've understood those two principles, urban heat islands then become easy. So let's have a look now at a typical landscape. So in a typical landscape, this is your cross-section of the city. You will have your CBD in your centre with story, dense buildings, and also a high degree of traffic. If I quickly draw in a couple of cars. So these are all giving off heat. Either side of our city, we know that we will have less dense urban areas. Perhaps they will be a suburban area, perhaps it will be the rural urban fringe. Those buildings and traffic in those areas will also give off what you will notice, of course, is that your heat will be greater the minute you have gone over a more dense area. Okay, so you get this urban heat island effect, where the temperature recorded will be cooler here, then it will rise, but it won't so much be cooler here. And the reason being is this. We, in this country, have a prevailing southwesterly wind. eastern side of your city is going to be warmer than the western side of your city. All this relates to the work in your textbook on page 406 onwards. So this is where this work has come from. So if you've read through the section of the work, you will understand why your city is giving off so much heat. Because of the high number of reflected surfaces. Because there is so much because there is high density of people and high density of buildings. Now, also in your textbook, you have got on page 408 a lovely map of London that clearly shows where you have got your heat. Now, your heat might also be generated in industrial areas. Obviously, today, the majority of our small business industrial areas are in the periphery. But in the past, you would have noticed eastern side of the city. Urban heat islands do cause a problem. They can cause problems to the physical fabric of the city, but they can also cause problems to human health. They also cause problems to traditional vegetation systems. So I'm hoping that you have read and understood all that on page 